Hello, dear master's students. Uh, this is not an official video. This is just like a consultation uh, from me to let you know the basic guidelines and requirements for your research paper. My name is Olga, or Olga Yurivna Shemanska, but you can call me Olga. If you have any questions, so should there be any questions, be free to ask. Uh, you have my contact and a chat on WeChat, or you have my email, so you can email me and ask all your questions. So make sure that by the time when you come here on February, um, you should be ready with the draft paper, at least half of your research should be completed. Um, the part that deals with literature review, with methodology, and with keywords explained, each word of your title explained there. So uh, let's consider uh, the basic requirements for the work. Uh, so first of all, um, we deal with a structure uh, and uh, um, well requirements for, for the format. So first, uh, you're supposed to use uh, Arial or Times New Roman font uh, 14, uh, one and a half line spacing. Pages should be numbered in center bottom. Chapter tile centered and bold. Uh, the length, um, so the volume of your work is about 50 to 60 pages, uh, which is about uh, 12,000 words. And your reference list should contain about uh, 20 to 50 uh, items that you quote and refer to in your work. So what about the structure? I've already sent you this information, but let's revise it again. So first, introduction. Well, actually, usually students write introduction not in the introduction of their work, but usually you write introduction when you already have all your work. Um, it means that in introduction, you mention very like specific key points of your work, of your research, and usually in the beginning, you do not know actually what you will have there, uh, what will emerge and appear there, uh, because you really are suppo you're really supposed to embrace all the ideas in your introduction. That's why I'd better keep introduction to the end of your work when you have uh, the complete structure or like a draft of your paper. But it's up to you. It's up to you. You can do it in the beginning. So then the theoretical part, like the, um, the part that you can already uh, complete and that you are supposed to complete by the time when you start your uh, offline classes here. Uh, theory and method. So what you uh, write there, this is, um, first of all, um, literature review and uh, research methods. And uh, how you deal with that, um, let me uh, show you, for example, theory and methods, what you write there. For example, let's take the title. Let it be pragmatic potential of news media texts on customs and water protection. Let it be like one of my articles. I deliberately chose something not connected to your major. So what you do in this theory and methods chapter, you deal with each word. You deal with each word from your topic. For example, if it is pragmatic potential of blah, 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 I will write what is pragmatic potential, news media text, so what news media text I take, so this is about the material, yes? Uh, customs and border protection, what is customs and border protection? If you have like dance therapy in uh, Chinese um, schools, primary schools, for example, then I will write uh, what is dance therapy, what schools, what primary schools I'm going to consider. So it should be clear. So you touch every, every point of your topic so that all the words and all the methodology was clear. Uh, literature review, so clear. What is there on my topic? What is there on general ideas, on general methodology? So if I'm talking about pragmatic potential of news media text, for example, there are very, very few works on customs and border protection text, but there are a lot of works about pragmatic potential and strategies of media text. So I will read that literature. I will consider it. I will quote it. I will um, prepare the presses. So uh, this is how I work with literature. 
Uh, then uh, methodology. You know that there are different approaches to different um, subjects and areas. Uh, some people choose one approach, some people choose other approach. Uh, so you should choose one of the approaches. You can uh, describe all the approaches that exist, but I'd like to choose this one, for example, like semiotical approach, psychological approach, um, whatever. They can be very, very different depending on the sphere of, you, uh, of your interest. So I choose this approach and I like make a explanation, I ground it, I show why this approach is relevant for my research. And it's very important that you do not um, um, try to invent something, especially theoretical things. Uh, this is master's thesis. So you're not supposed to um, invent something uh, theoretical. You're supposed to analyze some practical material, some sources, some historical things, some influences, some processes, um, better ways of uh, improvement of some situation. But usually theoretical part, methodology, you borrow from someone. So you take it, you are using methodology uh, worked out by other very smart scientists, uh, smart people. So you always refer to them like, as professor blah, blah, blah says, or as uh, this scientific school considers. So this is very important that you um, just trust some particular sources, some particular methodology. Clear. Then approach again, which approach you choose, why, and which approach are you going to use in your research? Uh, because after the theoretical part, you will have some practical part. Never mind if it's an experiment or it's just analysis or it's uh, data analysis, uh, whatever. Anyway, you will have some approach. Uh, you will well, exercise this approach. So you have to explain why and why exactly this very approach is relevant. And material. So you mentioned in the beginning of your work, you mentioned what you are going to analyze. Um, uh, for example, I'm going to analyze customs and border protection text from this, this, and this uh, web uh, resource. Or I'm going to analyze uh, primary school number two. Why is it important to consider this topic? Why is it necessary to study this sphere? Uh, and this is about uh, the actuality, we call it actuality, novelty of your results. So why are you doing this research? It should be useful for somebody. It should be important for something, for improvement, for implementation, whatever. So good. Now, this was about theory and methods, which is about uh, 15 to 20 pages. Uh, then your practical chapter. So I, I hope that it's clear that you might have not like two chapters, you know, theoretical and practical. They can be subdivided into sub chapters, but in general, it's like theoretical part and it's practical part. Uh, but you can divide them in some other way, uh, which is good for you. Uh, so uh, 15, 20 pages for theory methods, and then your own contribution. So your practical part, analysis, discussion, figures, charts, um, experiment, depending on uh, well the scope of your work. Again, 15, 20 pages. Conclusions, three to five pages and references. As I told, uh, you're supposed to have about 20 to 50 sources. All citations uh, must be quoted properly. And later I'm going to tell about it. You might have appendices in your work if there are some uh, statistics, some data, some charts, some maybe pictures. It can be a CD or a reference link to a video. Uh, it can be pictures. It can be um, some worksheets. So it depends on uh, so, your work. Um, now let's uh, set to such important part as uh, references and quotation. Uh, why uh, is it important? Because um, it's very serious that all papers are checked for plagiarism. And only up to 20% of plagiarism is allowed and anyway, everything is considered and details studied. So all the um, citations should be done properly. 
So how you work with that? Please don't waste your time now when you write some introduction, when you do literature review and you do not mention any sources. It's just a waste of time. Then you will have to catch up with that and go back to all your sources to quote properly. So how to do it? Let's consider. <clears throat> so quotes and references. Look, um, what you do when you use some uh, references, a book, an article, uh, a web page, anything, you should keep in mind that you have to uh, include it into your reference list. So what you mentioned there, author, title, volume issue, if it's in a, a journal, for example, place of publication, publisher, editor, if any, date of publication, uh, if it's um, an electronic resource, then uh, mode of access. And in um, our requirements, you're supposed to write date of access as well. Pages for articles. So for example, look at the screen, you have uh, an example. Uh, this is a part of my text. This is a part of my article. I write linguistics literature pays great attention, blah, 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 blah. And then uh, pay attention, I have uh, quotation, so quotation marks, because I exactly take a part of Richard's work and I quote them. So metaphor is a principle of language. And this is from page uh, 17. Um, in my reference list, I write the book, so the name of the title, um, so actually sort of journal, um, editor, you see M is uh, Moscow, so place of publication and the year of publication. And this will be number one in my uh, reference list. And in my text, I have one comma page 17. So I hope it's uh, clear. Uh, if I just mentioned Richard's work, it would be just one in the square brackets. If I do not quote particular sentence, paragraph or definition, I can just mention the number of source in my reference list, like here. Uh, let's look how quotes and references look in reference list. So in the first example, there is uh, not particular author, but the title of work. Again, uh, all the information and number of pages. So it depends. Actually, in Belarus, we're supposed to um, mention the number of pages in the book. Uh, abroad, not always, but in Belarus we do it. Then, again, article name, a name of journal, uh, volume, date, and pages of the article. I think it's clear. So, um, if you have an electronic resource, uh, you're supposed, again, to write the author, if any, the title. Then you, you uh, write electronic resource, and you mention mode of access, so which is just a link, and date of access. So date of access is when you access this page. Uh, what is very important, of course, when you are writing your work, your thesis, you do not know how many uh, sources you will have in your reference list. And it's hard to write like one, two, three, because you do not know. Then you have to sort them alphabetically or in the order of uh, like appearance in your text. That's why while working, um, you can do the following thing. Uh, you do not write the number because you do not have the full list yet. You just write author, for example, Richards, comma, page 231, or um, uh, Richards, just, or a website, or name of book, or name of dictionary, or any other resource. And then when your work is ready, when you have a draft paper, when you're not going to add any more information, then you have your reference list and you know which author goes for which number and you will include in the end of your work, you will change the names of authors into their um, numbers in your reference list. One more very important point is, um, well, cross-check for plagiarism. So now I'm going to show you uh, how your work is going to be checked. Please look. Well, at the screen, at the screen, uh, you can see um, 
anti-plagiat, so anti-plagiarism. This is the um, site, this is the well, company provider uh, that our university cooperates with. So we use this system for uh, checking for plagiarism. Uh, it has free version and paid version. So at university, we use paid version. And uh, in the end of your work, uh, you pay for getting the particular evaluation of your work. But at home, uh, you can use free version. For example, uh, I download my article here and it is checked. So you see that originality of my paper is 87.88%. So it's very good. So originality is about 90%. That's great. So your work should be no less than 80% original. And borrowings are 12%. Uh, so it's normal. Again, if I get um, <clears throat> the report of my work, I would see uh, the links to particular internet sites, websites, where the quotes are borrowed from. Uh, pay attention that even if you quote the work and you write that this is uh, Richard's page 213, anyway, they will be <clears throat> spotted as uh, plagiarism. But if you quote properly, that's fine. But anyway, originality of your work should be very high. Uh, what else is important? Uh, some students try to be very smart uh, and they take or, I don't know, well, steal or buy some research works and they just, just translate them in Google Translator. Uh, but you know that all your works have a reader and these readers can do the following thing. I'm going to show you. Uh, for example, I have translated from uh, Russian into Chinese in automatic Google Translator and I have this text. And if I Google it, uh, I will see that, well, it's okay. It's okay. And I'll say, wow, page on how. Well done. But uh, the reader of your work can do the following thing. The reader can actually copy part of your text, insert it into Google Translator. It will translate it into Russian. And then I will Google it in Russian or in English, whatever. So we are talking about English and Chinese mostly with you. And you can see that actually here is completely that quote. And I understand that this person has not quoted properly this author, but has stolen the part of their work. And so this is plagiarism and this is very serious. So please make sure that you uh, will comply with the requirements and that you do not violate these requirements. This is very important. Yeah. And the last thing uh, that I want to show you uh, today is uh, the paper. So how it looks like. I deliberately decided to take um, the paper in uh, Russian so that it was just like a general outline of the paper. So you see, uh, this is the beginning of the paper. You will have the title, uh, particular requirements for the format you will get later. It's, it's easy when you have your work, it takes uh, not that much time to, uh, well, uh, to make it uh, in particular format. So you have the title, your name, your specialty, your major number, code, then uh, this is contents, uh, introduction, uh, general characteristics of uh, your paper uh, in which you will mention particular things. I'll talk about that later. Again, you will do it in the end of your work, not now. Now you work with theoretical part. You see, this is chapter one, uh, theoretical part, and it has three, um, three um, well, sub chapters, so divided which uh, deals with all the words of the title, as I mentioned, and methodology. And again, why I choose this material to consider, like here, искусствоведческие аннотации как объект исследования. So why do I consider these works? Then, uh, chapter number two, which is practical, which is my uh, contribution to, the, uh, to this branch of science, and again, it has some uh, parts. Then conclusion, reference list, and summary. Summary, again, you will write in the end as one page length. 
So introduction, blah, 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 all my words, keywords explained, then general characteristic of your work, of your paper. Uh, so there you write uh, actuality, so novelty of your work, why it is important, what is the current issue in science, uh, then the aim of your research, methods, and what is very important is um, like your main findings or provisions for the thesis defense or conclusions or statements. So uh, in Russian, we call them положения. Uh, so what are they? Again, you will write it in the end, in the end when you have your work done. But this is very important. So you're supposed to have up to like three, four, five, about four. So three to five um, conclusions uh, three to five main findings uh, that are new for the science. For example, to say that dance is very important for the development of, I don't know, a child, the culture, or music uh, is important for our emotional well-being, it's not something new. It's a, an all known fact. So I can't include it into my findings. But if I consider how this, for example, classical music influences particular kids with uh, some like behavioral problems, for example, in particular school, then in this case, I will write. So it influences this way, that way, or uh, this percent of students is affected and this not. This will be my own finding, my own conclusion. And these conclusions would go into your um, statements, into your main findings. Again, uh, if you analyze something, if you make some conclusions about how to improve um, some process, again, you will write there, so we can improve by this and that. Uh, these are going to be your findings. And usually this is formulated in the end of your work when you already know what you have discovered, what you have found, what is new about uh, the subject uh, of your research. So theoretical importance, practical importance, how you um, presented the results of your work on conferences, workshops, if you have any publications, uh, again, you should try to have some publications. In spring, we usually have a conference for students, um, for postgraduate students, uh, for young scientists. So in this conference, uh, well, you are advised uh, to take part in these conferences. Uh, the material should be about four pages long. And when you have uh, some literature review, some ideas about what to study, or if you already have some practical conclusions, then uh, you can submit your uh, paper uh, to the conference, take part in the conference and have the results published. Uh, later, this will go to um, well, your portfolio, to your CV, uh, you will include your publications in your CV and make it more impressive. So try to take part in conferences, please. Uh, then, uh, as a master's student, uh, you have to deliver reports on the results of your research um, regularly, uh, depending on the department you study at. So, uh, usually it's about uh, three to four times a year. So be ready to uh, give the report about what you have already done and what you're planning to do. Uh, then in this uh, general characteristic, you mentioned structure of your work, like you say, I have two chapters which consider blah, 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 and the volume of your work. Then chapter one, again, chapter one, section, chapter, section, blah, 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 chapter two, so practical. You see, for example, here we analyze, so this was on linguistics, so we analyze particular examples, again, second one. So you are supposed to have some data, figures, charts, pie charts, diagrams, anything. Uh, then conclusion. In the conclusion, uh, it is very important that your conclusion goes uh, like hand in hand with your key main findings. If your main finding one is about something, then your first conclusion is about this one. It is more precise, more concrete, given examples, referring to the uh, findings uh, from your paper, but it goes uh, like in parallel mode. 
One, two, three, four. So we had four main findings, then we have four points in conclusion. Then reference list. So this list is too big, too long. So you really don't need 80 uh, sources. So you're supposed to have about like 30 to 50. It's okay. Uh, then um, if you have publications, then you'll mention them also in your reference list. For example, my student had two publications, so he can mention them. Uh, then summary. Uh, we usually have summary on uh, two languages, English and a Russian language. Well, and this is just the text of uh, presentation. Well, I think that that's it. Uh, now you're prepared. Now you know what to do for your research. So please keep in mind all the things that I told you. Don't forget to quote properly, to write the number of resources. And anyway, you have to use, well, to make presses. You should retell information. You can quote like short parts of sentences. Of course, you quote definitions. You quote some terms, terminology. But in general, this is how you analyze. This is review. This is literature review. The full, the full book can go into just two sentences or one paragraph. And of course, your own conclusions, your own practical part should be written by you, not by somebody else. So good luck with your studies. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And we'll be happy to see you here in Minsk. Bye.